Hello to everyone. I'm going to read from my book, The Philosophy of Love. And it starts with a poem, Thoughts Will Be Our Future, by Susan Moreau. Let go of the past, for it is gone, never to be changed. Tomorrow will elusive be, you only have today. Thoughts design our future, include love in all you do. Make each moment count. Tomorrow depends on you. A philosophy of a loving God, in deed and truth, with affection for all creation, is shown through the proof of natural law, in which all life must function and progress. Eternal justice is the correlative of eternal love. The laws necessary for orderly existence are put in place. Our personal sojourn on the earth plane is to refine our spirituality through the opportunities and challenges of life and our ability to meet and resolve these challenges in a spiritual manner. Each time we meet an opportunity and deal in good faith with responsibility for the situation, we have gained spiritual growth for our soul. If the opportunities presented are ignored or otherwise not met in a responsible manner, we withhold the light to our spiritual soul. Religion's responsibility in humanity's affairs is to be a spiritual guideline, like a blueprint to the soul and the challenges, so they can be met in the most spiritual fashion. If religion is based on faith in a God of vengeance and jealousy, people then emulate this behavior. If, re if religion is based on reason and knowledge, revealing a loving God, creator, then people will know and respond with love. Religion must search for knowledge and wisdom to guide and free humanity. The more knowledge gained over the century, the more is found that confirms infinite intelligence and points to God's challenges for each of us to meet. Mediumship is the ability to remain in the middle. One side faces God to receive progressive knowledge, while the other faces humanity to met pass the message as received. And spiritualism has certainly found that mediumship works. It really does. And not just for our individual messages, which we will enjoy today, we always do, but for the fact that God can speak to us through spirit, and as our spirit connects, and we are doing the mediumship, which is spirit to spirit, then we are receiving that which will enhance how we live, who we live with, where we go, what we do. We often find ourselves in a confusion of what comes next or whatever. We like to know the pattern. We like to know the future. And then somehow if we knew the whole thing, I think we might end up being disappointed, you know? <laughs> the fact is, create your future. You can. You are capable. With each thing that you do, with every time you meet a challenge, with every time you meet a, an opportunity in your life, you're designing that path that's going to go forward. That's the philosophy of life, okay? That's the philosophy of life you want to embrace, that we are creating our future as we live our day today. I think it's Buddha that suggests that we live one day at a time, but in doing that, sometimes we don't look forward to that awareness that we can get excited to be, what's the next step? We can take an adventure for the next step. And life should be an adventure. It shouldn't be all designed, but it should also have a little continuity to it. And that is what life is about, is continuity. What we receive here on the earth pain, we will receive in the afterlife. How we learn here, we will continue to learn. And it's a question of how we fill ourselves with, with the opportunities that present themselves in this lifetime. We have the opportunity to learn and grow. We have the opportunity to face a situation and what would be the best for everybody concerned. Or sometimes we take a shortcut and just what's best for me? Where am I in all of this? But if we live only for me, I think that we lose the continuity of life that says that all everybody comes into our life. I have an inspiration that says reason, season, and lifetime. And everybody comes into our life for a reason, all right? And as they're in, their, in our life, they're presenting an opportunity for us, an opportunity to connect with them, but an opportunity to learn things from each other. I 
think we're learning and growing with every step we take, with everything that we do, with all our interactions with people. I think that we're learning all the time. And as we're doing that learning, <coughs> we have to realize that we're also giving back what we know, how we do things, and what's right. I was talking to an atheist recently who claimed I'm an atheist because I don't give opportunity for others to have their own God, or that I formed my own. I think that was the, I think that was the issue. Yes, I think we form our own God. I think within ourselves, God is important to our lives. He's certainly important to my life, and that's certainly where I come from. But I don't make that a requirement for those <coughs> others that come into my life, because they also come in with a message for me. And it might redefine somehow how I think about God's hand in my affairs and, and what I'm doing. Okay, Because we're all children of God, and His Spirit is in all of us. So when you get something from somebody else, you're getting the spirit. You're getting the spirit of, what, of that which flows. And to me, we're in spiritualism. The base word is spirit. So we need to work with that spirit. We need to allow it to flow. We need it to allow it as we learn things to flow from our heart, to flow from our being, to flow from our spirit to other spirit and allow the next spirit to grow as well. Jesus spoke many things in a reference to nature. We talk of natural law, but just if you think about nature, the seeds that we sow, the way that we feed them, the way that we water them, the way that we fertilize them, all the good and bad that happens, and how they blossom. So all of the things in your life are about nature. He opened us to understand that nature had these steps within the existence of the ideal, within the existence of the philosophy, within how you thought about yourself and about others. Philosophy, I think, is a very personal thing. We all have our own. We decide that this is right for us. This is the right way to do it, because I say so for me. But for me, not for you, not for the rest of the world, this philosophy is mine. And that's why I think that's very personal. I think our religion is that way as well, because when God steps into that picture, we still worship God in our personal way. We have a covenant with God. And that covenant, the word means promise, is that he will be there for each and every one of us if we allow the open heart, the open spirit, to allow that into our life. I somehow find if I haven't sort of prayed on a situation, it doesn't come out half as good as if I did. The fact is that you need to bring God into what you're doing and make your decisions thereby, okay? But it's up to each of us to see God in that light or in that ability to help us. As an atheist, uh, my friend has no higher being <coughs> to bring in to his reasoning to bring into what he is thinking about and his actions as he moves forward. And I don't think I will have any opportunity to discuss it further because um, it sort of began and ended with this big discussion on atheism. <laughs> and the fact is that if we're atheists, it merely means we're creating our own God. And if that's what um, what it means, I'll accept the title, I'll accept the role, because I do create my God, I create my God within me, and it's not that I am God, it's that I'm creating that energy within me, I create my covenant with God, my promise that he will supply the energy that I have life, that I have continuity, that I have opportunity, that I have challenges, all of that I believe comes from my connection with who and what God is within my life. And rarely will you hear somebody walk up to you at work or something and, and use the word God. You never hear it in life. And yet all of us are seeking that. All of us are seeking that energy. We're all seeking to bring that into all of the affairs of things that happen. I remember reading um, something somewhere where 
uh, someone said they sat and they meditated for a moment and brought the correct spirit in before they held the meeting at work. Okay? Um, so a lot of people use that correct spirit or what's correct for them. I'm not saying correct in, in the universal term, but only what's correct for them to calm, bring forward that which is positive. Why do we say a prayer when we're at our church meeting? We say the prayer so that God brings a calm energy to help us make reasoned decisions. And there is collective energy when we get together. That's why a circle works, to help us develop and formulate our spirituality. I truly believe circles are about spiritual circles, our personal growth, as much as they are for um, collective growth. Uh, a group has its energy as well. There's a group energy. And as long as we bring the great spirit into that, the, the God spirit into that, we're working towards a higher spirituality for ourselves because we can grow higher when that spirit is higher around us. We can use it. So I think our philosophy of life should be that we live for the right. We live for the spirit. And we go forward in what we know to be right for ourselves. And therefore, it can only be right for those that we touch and sort of limit our negativities and things like that that we can fall into so easily. That's my thoughts for this morning. Thank you for listening. <laughs>